Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. While they were going, some of the guard went into the city and told the chief priests everything that had happened. After the priests had assembled with the elders, they devised a plan to give a large sum of money to the soldiers, telling them, You must say his disciples came by night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this comes to the governor's ears, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So they took the money and did as they were directed. And this story is still among the Jews to this day. Now, the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember... I am with you always to the end of the age. We will now sing the first three verses. morning. Takes a little bit to get ready here, but that's okay. <laughs> the very first Easter was not as crowded, was not in a crowded worship service with singing and praising 
And on that very first Easter, the disciples were locked in their houses. It was dangerous for them to come out. They were afraid. They wanted to believe the good news and that they heard from the women that Jesus had risen, but it seemed too good to be true. They were living in a time of such despair and such fear. If they left their homes, their lives, and, and the lives of their loved ones might be at risk. Could a miracle really have happened? Could life really have won out over death? Could this time of terror and fear really be coming to an end? Alone in their homes, they dared to believe that hope was possible. That long night was over and morning had broken. That God's love was the most powerful of all, even though it didn't seem quite real yet. Eventually, they were able to leave their homes. When the fear and the danger had subsided, they went around celebrating and spreading the good news that Jesus was risen and love was the most powerful force on the earth. You know, this year, we might get, we have experienced a little bit of the taste of what that first Easter might have been like. Still in our homes, not able to come out, but to believe that hope is on the horizon. And after a while, when it's safe for all people, when it's the most loving choice, then we can come out. We can come out, we can gather together, we can sing and shout the good news that God brings even, even brings life even out of death. And that love always has the final say. So as we're sitting in our homes right now thinking of, of that first Easter, but we know there's hope at the end of the rise and because of our risen Christ then we know we have something to really look forward and we can go out and spread Jesus' love and his praises and spread the good news just like the disciples did. Well, this morning I'm going to share with you, I want to share a story with you. It's a story of transformation. And it's one of the most powerful Easter stories that I have ever heard. I, I have done this before. And some of you may have seen it, but... It was performed and written by Joni Burnside, and it was shared in the book Having a Merry Heart in a Martha World by Joanna Weaver. You see, Jesus came to set us free, truly and completely free, free from the dark shroud of doing things our way, free from the mere shell that we so often settle for when we give him our life. God helps us leave our hard hearts behind so that we can become all that he intends for us to be. You see, Jesus didn't come to make bad people better. He came to transform us into something entirely new. And my words, the words of this, are not going, they're going they can't paint the power behind the images of the performance that Joni Burnside, but I'm going to try to convey it with you. So you're going to be imagining a little bit, me as an old woman, guess what I am. <laughs> but anyway, um, I'm going to get one more thing just to prepare, and then um, I'm going to get all the rest of my props on here. and. Uh, I will take the stage in the center, I guess. It will set to do.
One who would have grown but never changed. Her life would have become old and ugly and embittered had it not been for the grace of the Creator. Well, this is what she would have become. This twisted old form. Here was her scar, which covered her head, her precious, her precious brain. You know that above average intelligence? The universities and the degrees were all to obtain, hers to obtain and to flaunt and to impress others, to shrink others down to her size. Well, her hair, the crown, that should have been, was merely a reflection of the anxieties that riddled her life. For she was prematurely gray. She worried about everything. Her future, her past, her mistakes, her dreams, and her teeth. Well, these are the guardians of her mouth. One of her most vicious weapons was if or ever ready to bite and to cut into others. The quick with sarcasm and barbs. For out of the overflow of her heart speaks the tongue. Sometimes it was as seemingly innocent as gossip. Other times judgment and at times outright lies as she ass assassinated the characters of others. Well, her purse, this is her security. For it has her beloved checkbook. She was born into affluence. She had money. And as long as there was money in the bank to protect her, she was safe. She was safe, so no one could touch her. No one could reach her. She walled herself in with material goods. None of them were evil in themselves, but for all of them, they were evil because she worshipped them and adored them instead of him. Well, her cane, she used like a finger to point at people, to point accusingly at the sins of others and that she saw, they were her sins, but she saw them in others instead of herself. And it became a wonderful crutch, this overdeveloped super ego for whatever, for whatever she thought or felt bad about herself, she could easily find bad in the lives of others. Well, her shoes, <laughs> her shoes, they, they cover the, one of her saddest, one of her saddest features, and that was her feet. Those poor, beaten down stubs. She had spent her lifetime just wandering aimlessly. She had no purpose, no one to follow, and nowhere to go. Each day meant only another 24 hours of hopelessness. Well, this, <coughs> this is her, her sins, it's her burden. The sin that she bore, and it weighted her down. Every year it kept getting heavier and heavier. <sighs> she stuffed all those sins in the sack and hoping no one else in the world would ever notice. But it was very obvious to all. Her life had become grotesque. With the weight, her sins disfigured the beauty that she was meant to be. Her heart, heart as stone. You know, it was like, it was hard and unrelenting and 
it didn't let any love in and it didn't let didn't give any love out. It protected, it was protected from her intruders by her head, her mouth, her purse, and her cane. Then one day, one day this woman met some friends who had lives of sweet purity. They offered her the living water. And when she could bear the thirst no longer, she took a taste, just a taste, mind you, because she wasn't, she wasn't ready to really drink it yet. She just took a small taste. But you know, that taste was so sweet. It was so sweet and it made her thirst beyond compare, so she took it and drank it. And that living water filled her and satisfied her from her crown to her toes. Now, the scarf that covered her brain that she used to cover her knowledge for, his, for her glory, not for his, she loosed it. Her thoughts became his thoughts. And she surrendered to his spirit. The hair, <laughs> once gray and still is, but the hair, um, whew, was made new again. For the joy was his, as and it's now hers. It's now hers. The mouth. The mouth that had cut people down and be, she started to build them up and she started to sing praises to them. You look so beautiful. Oh, come go with me. Let's go to church. Let's go feed the hungry. Her mouth started seeking ways to soothe rather than to cause hurts. And the purse. The purse became a tool too. As a sheath is with, to a sword, it carried something of great power, but her money was now used to feed the hungry, to help the poor. She gave the money for others. So, it was fine. The cane, she didn't bleed that any longer. She could give it to somebody else that might need a cane. She didn't need her cane any longer. She didn't need to point fingers at anyone because she didn't need to judge because of his grace. So she gave it to others in need and she sought to come alongside and bear others' burdens. But she didn't need this bag anymore either of her heavy sins. And now her feet, <laughs> her feet, at first they began to walk and then they began to run and dance with joy. For finally, she had a reason to live. She had a master to follow the path that he prepared specifically for her. Such joy she had never known. So she danced. She became a beautiful butterfly because of him. You see, she didn't need all of that burden on her, of her sins. She didn't need all that burden on her shoulders because now her heart has been softened. Her heart was softened and transformed into a new, vital, living heart. Yes. He filled her heart with love. Her heart that was inside and was hard. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Thank you for hearing my tale. You see, I am the butterfly.
And we have, we can float, we can dance, we can leave all of our earthly garments behind. And we can invite each of the others to do the same. As I've surrendered my life to Jesus' teachings, even his rebukes, I've learned the value of God's tender discipline. It's only when we struggle to break free from the chrysalis of our lower nature that the true beauty of the new life Christ offers each of us can be truly known. So, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to share the familiarity of old patterns and old clothes. See, Jesus, remember, he came. He came to make all things new. He was resurrected to make all things new. So hear him and obey him and receive his love and discipline. And then, get ready to fly. The women were terrified and bowed with their faces to the ground. And then they were asked, Why are you looking for the dead, among the dead, for the living? For someone who is alive. The Easter celebration is one of my favorite times of this church year, and at other times that are awesome too, but the wow moment of my faith is found in the resurrection of our Christ. Jesus Christ. Only God can break through with this wonderful grace and power. The new life we have in Jesus Christ is both for here and eternity. And although there is still ministry to be done, there's so much to be done. I long to see those who have gone on before me. I long to see my Savior, my Redeemer and my Lord. And that's shouting news because he lives. We're going to sing that in just a moment, but I want to offer a word of prayer before we sing He Lives. If you'll bow with me. Dear Heavenly Father, when we, everything was dark and it seemed that the sun would never shine again, your love broke through. Your love was too strong, too wide, too deep for death to hold. The sparks cast by your love dance and spread and burst forth with resurrection light. Gracious God, we praise you for the light of new life made possible through Jesus. We praise you for the light of new life that shone on the first witness of resurrection. And we praise you for the light of new life that continues to shine in our hearts today. We pray that the Easter light of life Hope and joy will live in us each day and that we will be bearers of that light and through the light and lives of others. Amen. So now let us end the service with He Lives. Christ the Lord does live today, so He Lives. <laughs>